Hey guys, Ron here. So a couple of months ago, I made a video based on a Twitter challenge where artists create new Pokemon by just changing one letter of existing Pokemon. I thought this trend was phenomenal. And since I've been known to draw a Pokemon or two from time to time, I thought it would make sense for me to take a crack at this challenge. The results were varied, but always entertaining. You guys clearly enjoyed Pori God and Trap Punch, so I'ma punch you in the face with some more godlike spins on some of your favorite Pokemon. If you're new, make sure to check out all my other fake mom videos after this. You won't regret it. And if you're not new, I, I don't have to keep this act up. Uh, you're already hooked. But honestly, let's do a little challenge today. O other than the changing one letter challenge, I am not going to cut out any part of the audio unless I mess up completely. Like, like I by mistake say a slur. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> that won't happen, obviously. But my point is, what if I just don't cut? Let's try it out. I'll keep on any mistakes I make, unless, again, they're really just not fun to listen to. Like me repeating lines over and over again, trying to get them right. Let's begin with a simple switch, turning Golduck into Colduck. Ice is just solid water, and a C is simply just a female G if you think about it. So we're starting easy. So easy that it'll be one of the few that could fit into the franchise. All I'm gonna do is create an evolution to a regional Ice-type Psyduck, like Berserker and Persian. It'll be a more serious and literally and metaphorically cold, since this could be canonical. I'll take inspiration from real-world ducks, Arctic ducks like the King Elder Duck, to create a much more authoritative and harsh Psyduck evolution compared to the more relaxed Golduck. So it's a Golduck with a much longer and rougher beak and spikes in the configuration of a mohawk down his head instead of a cross. These are basically ice-cold icicles. I'm adding a more extravagant top of the beak like real-life King Elders instead of a crystal. I mean, realistically, its entire body is made of ice crystals. It'll have a coat of thick feathers around its, uh, you know, bird breast and <laughs> down his back, you know, back like a cape. Dude needs to keep warm, making it a bit shaggier and literally just slightly longer version of uh, Golduck's legs, making the feathers more prominent like a king's cape, and some more on the tail so it looks like a solid snow draping on its tail. But that's just feathers or fur, not actual ice. This Pokemon is egging on its opponent. It's very confident in its, in its battle abilities, so the pose is as if he's asking for a fight, but he won't strike first. The colors aren't uh, anything too surprising. Ice-colored body with white feathers, a more colorful bill like elders have, even puffins too. Black eyes like actual ducks, and originally I wanted a, a black head like the common elder duck, but the whole point is that its head has sharp icicles on it, not black ice. Behold, cold duck, the duck Pokemon, a pure ice type. Cold duck can be found in brutally frigid environments. It defends its territory from intruders with the sharp ice crown. Cold duck. F Cold duck fight among themselves for dominance by headbutting each other with their heads. Their icicle crown gets damaged every summer, but will regrow by winter. They use their crown to break ice as they swim. Their thick feathers protect them from extreme temperatures. They hunt in packs led by the most dominant male. They tear apart their prey with their sharp beak. They have the hidden ability Ice Body, Anger Point. Sorry, hidden, did I say hidden ability? They have the, the just the normal ability Ice Body, Anger Point, and the hidden ability Slush Rush. Their shiny is self-explanatory, not... Not gonna lie, this is my favorite Pokemon. Wait, not my favorite Pokemon, sorry. My favorite type of Pokemon. This is what happens when you don't cut. My favorite type of Pokemon. I already like the vibe of Golduck, so a more serious and cooler version only makes me like it even more. I love the slightly more diverse color palette when compared to when compared to Golduck, for example, but the contrast between the two is what I enjoy the most. The int the interactions between a Golduck and Golduck would be incredibly entertaining. Honestly, I messed up way less than usual there. Maybe it's because I psyched myself out. I don't know. Next, we are turning Feraligator into Feraligato. Ugh, I can't undo that. I said a, I, that was a very cringy Feral, Feraligato. I'm just going to say it, you know, American. Feraligano. That's right, Alligator Cat. Thank God there is already a, myth, a mythical creature that is basically just that. The Mishu Peshu. Is that right? Mishu Peshu? Is a Native American uh, cryptid that is akin to a reptilian lynx to the Algonquin... To the Algonquins, this underwater panther uh, was the most powerful underworld being, basically. But for the sake of this challenge, it's a feline for alligator. I, I will consider it a convergent species of Pokemon, a cat that became aquatic that ended up looking like a for alligator. Now let me tell you, making a face that's a cross between a crocodilian and a panther is pretty tough. We know what a alligator looks like and we know what a big cat looks like, so anything in between tends to look uncanny. But it's my job to make it look palatable. I'll constantly adjust the proportions, making it wider and wider. The teeth honestly pull it all together. Now we're making it quadrupedal. It's a cat croc on the prowl, nothing more intimidating. 
But honestly, the body is mostly for alligator. The cat features mostly come from the vibe. Like, I originally was gonna add sharp claws, but for alligator has those already, and I don't want the body to be fully for alligator, so I opted for soft kitty paws. Because remember, if the Pokemon is looking extremely hardcore, you want to add at least one attribute that would make it slightly less intimidating, so it's more of a trainable monster than a completely feral beast, even when the word feral is literally in the name. Gotta add those pads, just a bunch of rectangles that are a hassle to include, very hard to draw. I decided that a nice catfish mustache would make him look distinguished and a bit less like a for alligator. Mmm. That- why did I do mmm? That's not what the script said. The script says um, not mmm. <laughs> um, but the colors are literally for alligators. I don't even know why I put um in the script there. That didn't- that wasn't necessary. Beware for alligato, the big jaw Pokemon, a pure water type. For alligato star- for alligato- for alligato strikes- it's not strikes- stalks. Feraligato stalks its prey in the night. The power of its arms are staggering. One swipe can paralyze a foe. It finishes off its prey with its mighty jaw, which it uses to savagely tear up its victims with. No, which it uses to savagely tear its victims up. Yeah, that's it. It loves water and exclusively lives in damp areas such as swamps and lakes. It rivals no Pokemon. It uses its whiskers to find food and sense incoming rain. Its night vision allows it to see clearer than even what we see during the day. They are rather playful with any trainer that has raised it since birth. It has the abilities Torrent uh, and Sheer Force and even Fralligator's Shiny. It's definitely a ripoff of Fralligator, but like, that's the point. I think the fusion was successful. I'm a huge Fralligator fan and since literally everything from the original Pokemon is intact, I can't help but love this guy too. The last two were pretty serious. Let's make something a bit more fun. I'm gonna turn Rose Raid into Rose Rave. It's a Rose Raid with uh, rave glasses, classic rave outfit, and some glow sticks. It'll honestly make sense when I design it, but it won't fit into Pokemon canon, so I'm gonna create a new type of form. Party form. This will be a party form of Rose Rave, basically. Maybe a bunch of Pokemon evolved on a, on a party island and adapted for a, for a perpetual party. I don't know. Don't, don't judge me. Okay. So we're literally just drawing Rose Raid. Nothing, nothing has changed. But glow sticks are coming out of its flower hands. Biologically, they are bioluminescent, bio bioluminescent pistols. You know, the part of the flower, you know, in the middle. In case any biology majors come at me asking for the reason glow sticks are coming out of this Pokemon's body, instead of a masquerade mask, it has rave glasses. Basically, the classic Kanye glasses. Thank God Rose Raid uh, already has a choker, because it really does fit for the rave aesthetic. The various patterns and lines Rose Raid already has uh, have been reconfigured to look like the revealing outfit of a girl at a rave. I'm adding leaves on its forehead to look like the rhinestones makeup some girls sport at a rave. I'm giving her some lipstick. I mean, it's not actual lipstick, it's just, you know, it has lips that are pig pigmented, you know, differently than her face. My point is that this wild creature isn't wearing any actual makeup. The leaf cap, leaf ca the leaf cape is unchanged from Rose Raid, and I'm adding more uh, wrapped leaves around her arms and calves to look like the bracelets many girls wear at raves. It's a grass electric type now, so the color scheme has a bit more uh, neon yellow on it. It's way more reflective now too, with a bunch of more silver body parts. RGB lights felt too bright for the lights, so yellow, magenta, and cyan were applied instead. Some glitter on the body as well. Check out Rose Rave. The flashy Pokemon, a grass electric type. On a remote tropical island, the native Pokemon have evolved for a perpetual party. When exposed to the shiny stone, the Roselia born on this island evolve into Rose Rave. Their bioluminescent pistols produce strobing light that blinds foes and shocks opponents. They produce their own energy and don't need to consume sunlight to live, allowing them to sleep during the day and party all night long. They love to dance and socialize, but if a crowd becomes too rowdy or a fight breaks out on the dance floor, they shoot electrifying lasers from their glowing pistols and incapacitate the party poopers. The leaves on their body is where I lost my where am I where is the what where am I in the on the on the, on the script? Their leaves on their body are sparkly and reflective. Their silver leaves reflect light while their green leaves absorb it. It produces an aroma that increases the desire to dance for those around them. They have the abilities Natural Cure and Lightning Rod with the hidden ability Dancer. Honestly, Rose Raid canonically dances considering it's based on a patron of a masquerade ball, so having a regional form that dances in a rave makes total sense. It's a joke fake mon but could easily be retooled to work in the Pokemon world. Now all the Pokemon we made so far are final evolutions, so why not give some love to a cut, uh, cut? Cute, pre-evolved Pokemon. I'm gonna take Muna. Oh, I don't pronounce it Muna, it's Muna. I never pronounce it Muna, I don't know why I pronounced it Muna there. 
I'm gonna take Muna and turn it into Sana. That's why I said Mana, because it's Sana. Mana. I keep on saying Mana. Muna is a lunar dream eater. What if our Sana was a daydreamer? While Muna is based on a Baku, like Drowzu. Drowzu? Oh my god. Drowzy. The Japanese mythological tapirs that eat your dreams? It is prim it's primarily designed after a koro, a Japanese incense burner. How about we take inspiration from a different culture sensor for our regional form? In Arabian countries, they burn incense called bahur, in a sensor called mabhara. That'll be our visual muse for Sana. So it's basically a rounder Muna with way longer legs that look like the base of a mabhara. I, will, I made it to look more ornate and holy, almost like this is a prince and Muna is a princess. Most importantly, because I want to give it coronas, also known as a crown. That this fits anything sun related, but also Middle Eastern incense burners are, you know, more spiky than Japanese ones. I wanted to add ears that look like the spikes on a Mabhara, but you'll see I took them out in the final design because honestly it ruined the round appeal of Muna. Mabharas have uh, intricate floral patterns too, but a bit more western looking than the eastern koros. It was originally going to be black to contrast with the bright colors of Muna, but honestly gold makes the most sense. Very regal. Say hi to Sana, the Dream Eater Pokemon, a psychic fire type. In a region between Kalos and Hoenn, there lives a Pokemon related to Muna named Sana. It floats around when the sun is up, consuming the daydreams of others. When it eats a particularly imaginative and pleasant daydream, it produces white smoke. It has been used for centuries to ease anxiety, since it simply eats the uneasy thoughts that enter the minds during the day. People gather... Peeper... Peeper? Peeper. People gather around Sana to socialize in bliss. When humans congregate to worship, Sana is there to make sure nobody's mind drifts into boredom. It has the ability Levitate and the hidden ability Sweet Veil. I thought that its charge shiny would be appropriate and that Levitate would help as a fire type. I kind of combined the idea of incense and a water pipe, you know, that Arabians would traditionally gather around and socialize with. And technically, this is this could be an, uh, an Asonian. This could be an Asonian form of, of Muna. Honestly, I'll just, yeah, it is. I declare it an Asonian Muna. Now, Zangoose seems to be a common subject for our challenges. Today, though, I'm going to turn Zangoose into Mangoose. Now, you may interpret that as a man mongoose, but that's kind of what Zangoose already is, kind of. So instead, I'm going to design a man-like goose. The most human-looking goose imaginable. It'll be upright like a human, even gentlemanly and refined. Imagine an intelligent goose became a British nobleman. That's what I'm brewing. That's what my job is. I get paid by drawing man-sized geese. <laughs> In the beginning, I resolved to make a goose, but keep the ears of a zangoose so it looks like a upright feathers and, and it was more interesting than just a humanoid goose, but honestly, they don't look good. And this guy is supposed to look like a normal, you know, as normal as possible. That's gonna be the whole idea of the fake mon. I'm keeping the scar though. It makes it look experienced. Like this now refined man had a sordid past. As I was making the body, I tried to make it look like an upright bird, but that just made it look like a hanged chicken corpse. I decided that instead of wings, it should have feathers that look like a shawl. Since it doesn't fly, it shouldn't showcase big wings. But now it looks like a now it looks like a Victorian Englishman with one of those cape jackets, like Sherlock Holmes. I don't know what they were called, I guess Victorian cloaks? Feathers that look like an ascot, and a pattern that vaguely looks like a sweater or cardigan. Geese feet and tail, and boring old goose colors. Again, this is just some intelligent goose. He eats at the table, not on the floor with the Pokemon. I mean, I decided to give it a Velociraptor claw. I mean, Blaziken has arms, why can't he? Dude looks like a Baron. Now this is what a Mangoose looks like. This is Mangoose, the Mangoose Pokemon, a normal type Pokemon. Memories of its battles against other Pokemon consume it. They do not the they do not enjoy the company of other Pokemon, and in fact, act like humans. They are known to sit at the table and even converse with humans. They understand human speech and respond with honks and squeaks. Not squeaks, squawks. Goose, geese do not squeak. They move like humans and in battle fight with kicks and swipes from their talons. They maintain composure, but will go berserk when losing to other Pokemon, especially after a showcase of elemental mastery. As a result of their abuse by other Pokemon, they see other species as inferior. They are great swimmers, but do not utilize a single water type move. They can be insecure about their shallow move pool. They have the abilities Guts, Analytic, and Scrappy. Their shiny is akin to a rusted bronze statue. I'm a fan of how I kept its a feud, but instead of with the Viper, it, it, its feud is with every Pokemon, I guess. The idea is that it's extremely normal like a human and doesn't like other Pokemon who can harness the elements and blast fire or shoot lightning. It's a fine idea. 
I hope you liked the idea of this video too. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Check out all the other Fake Mon art videos too. Subscribe if you haven't and check out some of my other Fake Mon content. Consider becoming a patron or clicking the join button to get cool rewards like seeing videos days early and a huge discount on t-shirts I made for you guys. Follow me on Twitter where I post sneak peeks and final art of my designs. Bye!